In this episode, we're going to figure out how to make our page show up properly if something goes wrong with our fetch. So the first thing we're going to worry about is 404s and then any other general errors. We're also going to move the URL so that we don't have repeating values throughout our application. So this video shouldn't take too long. Let's just get through it and then we'll move on to something new. We check for a 404 in the first then of the fetch because response is going to have a status code that you can check for. So we can say if response.status is equal to 404, then we know the resource was not found. I think you could reasonably do one of two things here. So the first one would be to redirect to a 404 page. The other would be to render a 404 component in this page. This would be a new URL but would be fairly consistent across pages and would be really easy to do. This one requires a little bit more custom coding or logic, but might be a little bit more friendly because you can say something like this customer was not found or the customer with the name Taco Bell was not found. So we will go with this one first and then we will try this one. The first technique is going to use use navigate. So that's actually in React Router DOM. Anything with linking and navigation is React Router DOM. So we'll say use navigate. And then we will create a variable to refer to this. So navigate, use navigate. And then we will just say navigate. So it will look like this. Here, let me put it below this comment. Navigate, and then we can pass in a path here. So we'll just say slash 404. And this path was set up inside of app.js. So you can see right here, we'll render the not found component. Now let's visit our application. Now we can open any of these. And let's say we go to a customer that does not exist, such as customers five. You can see it's actually not redirecting. What's going on? Well, we're actually getting a 500 internal server error from the server. You can see these requests in more detail on the network tab. So our backend is actually not returning the appropriate status code. Let's take a quick peek at our backend. So right now we have this customer.objects.get. This will actually throw an exception if no data is found. So what that means is we could check for that exception. To show you what I mean, we could say print and just so we can really easily see this, I'm going to put a lot of exclamation marks because we're going to get an exception in the terminal and it can kind of fill up the screen a bit. So we will go to the local host 8000 and put in an ID that doesn't exist. And we get does not exist at and then this path. Looking in the terminal, we get this exception and nowhere do we see our print statement. Basically, we get to line 11. It doesn't work and things just don't continue. That's why we're getting a server 500 instead of a 404. So there's something wrong with our server. What we need to do is we need to surround this in a try. So it'll look like this. We'll say try. If something terribly wrong happens, we can catch that. So we will say accept and we can check for a specific exception and it's going to be customer dot does not exist. So that is how you check to see if there's any data returned. If there's not, we can just say raise HTTP 404 and put in a message customer does not exist. This is going to need imported from Django.http. So we'll put that there after a comma. And now when we check the back end, do a quick refresh, we should get a 404 instead. And you can see our custom error message right there. This page here, you won't see this in production. You'll set debug to false, but for debug being true, this is handy seeing exactly what went wrong with our custom message. So all we need to do now is we need to check our front end, do a refresh, and take a look at that. It redirects to slash 404. Cool, let's try the other option, which is to embed a 404 component in this page. So in that situation, we're going to use state. So I'm going to copy this line here and change this to not found and set not found. Then all I do is instead of navigating to 404, we're just going to, I'm gonna get rid of this line, set not found to true and then we can check for that value later on in our code. So down here, we can say not found. 
If it is, we will render the not found component we've created earlier. Otherwise, nothing. So now when we go to the page, let's go back. We'll go to customers five, for example. It keeps that URL and it says the page you are looking for was not found. It's a pretty simple component that we have right here, this not found, which we created in an earlier episode. It literally just returns this paragraph. So feel free to not even use this component. You could just copy this text or type it out yourself and put that in here directly. This would allow you to substitute things in a little bit easier or alternatively, you could define this with props and substitute in here. I'm just kind of giving you guys some options. So let's try here. The page you were looking for was not found. And let's try the customer with ID, substitute ID, was not found. And we'll just put the ID passed in here. Now we'll see the customer with ID 5 was not found. So far so good. The only thing I want to do now is rearrange our URLs so that we don't have duplicate URLs throughout our application. This will just help reduce bugs. That way if we change where our API is located, we don't have to go through a bunch of files and change it. So the way you do this, you could probably do it a lot of different ways. I'm going to keep it pretty simple and just open a single file inside a source. We can just call it something like shared.js and any kind of shared values you can put in here. Now inside of here, we can define the URL. So we will say export const URL and I'm just gonna call this base URL. So kind of like the start of the URL. And this is going to be HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 8000 slash now because we have this export we should be able to go into the customers file and import it so we'll say import and then inside of curly braces since it's not a default export we will say base url from dot dot to go up a directory and then shared now when we're defining the url down here we can remove this part and put that at the beginning so we'll say base url pl plus there's a cricket in here and he's, I can't find him anywhere. It's driving me crazy. Anyways, let's check this to make sure it works. So it seems everything is working the same way. Let's try three. Let's go ahead and do the same for the customer's page. So we'll import it first. Import base URL from dot dot slash shared. And then we remove this part of the URL. And we'll just say base URL plus. And you can clean this up too if you want. So we'll say const URL, take this line, paste it here, then put the URL here just for consistency sake. And then I'll just remove these console logs. Looks good. Checking out the front end still seems to be working. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next episode. Peace out.